Uh, what I will uh, try to, to do for my presentation is really to try to answer the question of this panel. Advanced manufacturing, why does it matter, especially now? So um, I work for Data Performers. We are a Montreal-based uh, uh, AI company. Uh, we exist now for more than six years, and we really specialize in operationalizing artificial intelligence in order to solve uh, our uh, client problems. My out outline would be like to go through three main uh, points. Uh, what's advanced uh, manufacturing? Why does it matter, especially now? And how AI would transform manufacturing? And I will try also to give you some uh, example. So for the first point, what's advanced manufacturing? Actually, um, in North America, we use more the term uh, digital manufacturing. In Europe, it's much more spread to use the uh, fourth industrial revolution in order to, to speak about that. And uh, what's, what's that exactly is really all the new technology that emerge, uh, like Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, that we were uh, speaking about in his presentation, augmented reality, cloud computing, and moreover, that uh, took together will really uh, produce a revolution in the industry. So it's really the synergy between all of these new technology that will create a new uh, era for the uh, industrial uh, revolution. In my presentation, I will try to focus really in artificial intelligence and um, why artificial intelligence in uh, industry or manufacturing? Uh, because it has its use thanks to the fact that we have, that manufacturers have more and more data uh, in kind of quantity, but also in kind of diversity. By diversity, I mean uh, manufacturers have data from uh, images, uh, from cameras, from their databases, from also their website, from the uh, number of products they sell, the inventory they do. So all of that uh, and all those diverse data really fuel uh, uh, artificial intelligence in order to produce uh, much more uh, better results. Another thing is also the fact uh, that we have cloud computing today uh, manufacturers don't need so much as before to have a really strong IT team in their, uh, in their uh, company. They can outsource that uh, with computing companies like Google, Amazon, uh, or Microsoft. So that also enables this uh, or ease this uh, new uh, manufacturing era. And lastly, we have really seen lots of advances in uh, smart, with smart, smart algorithm in artificial intelligence. So my second point will be, why does it matter, especially now? So this evolution came with challenges. I would say the first challenges is more uh, addressed to the society and maybe to political uh, leaders. Uh, this, new, um, this, this evolution will lead to really uh, new uh, jobs and new skills needed and competencies. Therefore, uh, our educational system will have to adapt to that because the competencies that are needed today in manufacturing will not be the same in 10 or 20 years. And it's really important to address them right now because to train uh, a student, you will need at least five years and more. So that's also part of uh, what uh, an economist, uh, Schumpeter, uh, was uh, calling the uh, uh, creative destruction, like in the past, one, one, of, uh, one example of that is the uh, uh, lamp lighter. Like we had a lot of lamp lighter in, uh, like one century ago that were lighting the streets. And with the advent of electricity, this job completely disappeared. But uh, this uh, revolution of electricity created also new jobs related to that. So we are really on that now. And it's really uh, important to, to, to start acting now in order not to have the, uh, to, to leave the consequences of not enough adapting. Another challenge is the need for new standard and regulation. This new technology lead also to new, uh, new ways of, uh, of doing business and new uh, necessity. Uh, one example is really uh, that you all uh, are familiar now is through uh, the data privacy. Like it's really an important topic those few years 
like how can we uh, protect our privacy as so much company are collecting data uh, regarding us. So this is one example of new standard and regulation that will uh, be more and more needed in the future. The last point is really uh, addressed to manufacturer themselves. Uh, this new technology enable also new way of doing business and manufacturer uh, in order to survive we really will have to really uh, adapt their business and evolve uh, in consequence to that before uh, manufacturer uh, maybe it's a legacy from industrial revolution we're really focused on scale economy of cost and making general product and at the cheapest price but what AI is enabling is really to be able to personalize uh, the, your product. So more and more manufacturer will have to, to, to adapt to that and to adapt their production and their way of uh, doing it in order to, um, to address this new demand from the consumer, enabled again thanks to this uh, new technology as artificial, artificial intelligence. My uh, third point will be how AI will transform manufacturing. So what's AI? I will try really to give a broad uh, definition of that. Um, simply, artificial intelligence is a field that try really to understand the human cognition in order to reproduce it. And as much as we don't really understand uh, what's really intelligence, we don't have a definition, or at least uh, researcher doesn't agree on a, common definition of intelligence, we are not at that stage, but we are trying to simulate that. And uh, one of the first way uh, we used in the 50s, 60s was, was what we called uh, expert system, and it was really based on uh, logic. Um, but another uh, school uh, to, to address this intelligence emerged uh, that we call mapping, and it worked, so spoke about a bit about machine learning in his research. Machine learning is really um, the fact that we try uh, to teach computer how to do something. And by teaching, it's through example, like we expose the computer to several examples or data. So the, uh, the uh, computer will learn how to do something properly. And that's really where, where we are now. And one uh, technique we use to do that is neural network. And this neural network really uh, have improved a lot in the past uh, few years and really past few years and enabled to do uh, lots of things that were not possible before. So what, um, how we can use AI in manufacturing, uh, one of the most common ways is uh, using it for preventive uh, maintenance, like manufacturers have lots of devices that need maintenance and they want them to work uh, as much as possible. Therefore, we are um, preventive maintenance is really a way to, um, to help manufacturer uh, reduce cost and be able to, to work uh, properly with uh, the, the devices uh, with really uh, reduced cost. Another, another way is what we call quality check. It's really uh, detecting default in the production. And I will give an example just uh, after this slide. Um, another way is also through optimization of the operation. You have several process involved in a manufacturer and it's really uh, AI help to optimize them. And another is also inventory management. Inventory is really a big cost by uh, immobilizing uh, assets for a company and uh, improving that help to reduce cost. And finally, generative design that I will give an example. So uh, my two examples, first one, quality check, ICIN. ICIN is a company uh, we worked with. It's a, a Japanese uh, part car manufacturer. It's a subsidy of Toyota. Uh, we help them to really uh, catch defect in their uh, products molding. Uh, that was a really challenging use case because they have lots of molding that could not be considered as default, but appear to be default. So we really help them to, to, to improve the quality of their production by uh, training a uh, deep learning model in order to do that. Um, and what deep learning was able to do is really, uh, because the, the image we get were really challenging in terms of quality and light, 
deep learning was uh, strong to really catch the bad and good parts and flag what's wrong and what's not. So that's one of uh, example. Another one is uh, generative design. Um, a use case we do with Autodesk was to gather um, one of our uh, client uh, data regarding designing a product. And through that data, we, we train the model in order to learn some pattern that were always going uh, again and again, and to generate some kind of basis to help the designer uh, to speed up the, the, the process as they will get some kind of basic pattern that they could, could still uh, update, but that uh, can help them to start with working. So that's for my presentation. Uh, thanks, everyone. I would be happy to answer questions.